This island is far away. The nearest inhabited territory is a five hour flight away. If any local commits a crime, he is brought to this prison where only 13 prisoners live. The inhabitants have their own laws. They speak their own language. Their biggest problem is the garbage that comes from everywhere. This island is as paradisiacal as it is problematic. We are in Rapa Nui, one of the most remote populated territories of our planet. Rapa Nui, also known as Easter Island, has a current population of about 8,000 people and belongs legally to Chile, although culturally it is very different. The people here have their roots well rooted, they have their own beliefs, customs, traditions, and in this video I plan for us to explore some of them. Wow, it is very special to be able to be here contemplating some authentic ones before our eyes. Just five out of an estimated 900 that exist on the island. Come on, we certainly have a great adventure ahead of us. Rapa Nui awaits us. Let's get to it. So first things first, who are the Rapa Nui, the original inhabitants of this island, and why is it? Many say that this territory belongs to the continent of Oceania. Politically, it belongs to Chile and they speak Spanish. To understand it, I will try to summarize the history a lot. Let's go. Many centuries ago, when the first Rapa Nui arrived to the island. In fact, right around here by Angharad Beach, legend has it that right on those lands where some tourists are soaking today, the first Rapa Nui baby was born to a woman who came pregnant on the boat. The Rapa Nui, by the way, are an ethnic group. It belongs to the Polynesian family, so in their language they share perhaps 80% of the words of the rest of the Polynesians. And this to this day persists. Rapa Nui is spoken a lot here. If you live with locals and observe how they communicate with each other, they will use perhaps 90% of the local language. I even fell in love. Well, many centuries later, the first European explorers arrived right on Easter Day. So this territory is also known as Easter Island, a name that many locals honestly don't love. And sometime later, in 1888, the island was politically annexed to Chile, following an agreement in which the Rapa Nui did not lose neither the control nor the possession of their lands. And this is very much respected and noticed. Up to date, the locals, for example, do not pay taxes. That, I believe, that explains it in a way, I repeat, extremely summarized. We, the Rapa Nui people, are the owners of our land, of this beautiful place called Rapa Nui. Each one does what he wants in his square meter. We are all owners of Rapa Nui and the majority of the people who have land that has been left from generation to generation by their parents and the whole island is collective, it belongs to all the Rapa Nui. Undoubtedly, the best known of this ethnic group are their Moais, these massive sculptures made of volcanic stone that we have seen in books and documentaries since we were children. They are here. It is often believed that they are only heads, but this is because the sites where they were photographed had partially covered them with sediment. And what are they really? It turns out that they are basically tombs, but very important tombs. What we see above, which looks like a type of cap, is called an eyebrow and represents what amounts to hair. The eyes are usually made of coral and black obsidian and the fish are made of red slag. It is very impressive to drive around and see them everywhere. Some of them already destroyed, but with high historical value, others that have been restored and are extremely impressive. And there are many mystical beliefs behind the dead being one of the greatest mysteries. How did they move from one place to another? The most common theory is that they used logs and used them as reeds, they rolled their heads. Others say it was a system of ropes that could swing the Moai back and forth, thus making it look like they were walking. And the belief of local legends tells us that the Moais moved by themselves with the power of mana. Once the Moai was sculpted, it was lifted, they walked to the place where it would remain for eternity. They are usually placed in front of communities so that the ancestors take care of their villages. And they are scattered. I repeat everywhere so you can see how everyday it is here on a dirt road. 
The road is over there, a very original throne sculpted hundreds of years ago. And here it is like something very casual. And you know, it is very crazy that they are not vandalizing. I feel that in many places we would already be seeing them graffitied. Anita and Juanito forever and not here as if the value of preservation is well instilled since people are very young. The site with the highest concentration of corn is the old quarry which has about 400. Some were left at a very early stage of construction, others very advanced and are very well defined. It is very cool to walk around here, it is a unique panorama without a doubt. Possibly the largest Moai of all is Tukanga, whose estimated height is 21 meters, but it remained in its first phase of sculpting and now remains largely buried underground. In a site as impressive as this, one imagines that there would be hordes of tourists, but honestly do not feel so full. The whole tourism thing is pretty well controlled and you can tell by the fact that depending on the time of year there is usually only one commercial flight a day. So although there are people from all over the world but it does not feel out of control outside of the historical and cultural value, modern life in Rapa Nui is very peculiar. Of course, these are people living in one of the most isolated territories on our planet. So how do they go shopping? If you commit a crime, there is a jail. Where do people go? Where do they go to school? What do they do in their free time, etc., etc., etc.? Let's see. If someone commits a crime on the island, they are brought to the local jail operated by the Chilean gendarmerie. They didn't let me in with a camera, but they did let me in to look around and talk to some of the people in here. So I tell you, there are four cells in total. At the time of recording, there are 11 people inside, nine men and two women. Most of the people inside have sentences of only months. There is one person who has a sentence of two years and 10 months and another one who has a life sentence for a crime that they would not tell me about, but I imagine it is something serious. Normally for a long or serious sentence, people would be taken to the mainland of Chile, but the person who was sentenced to life imprisonment here is Rapa Nui and he exercised his right to be on the island. In addition to that, I am told that he has as good conduct, therefore he has been given permission to live on his land for the rest of his days locked up, but at least on his island, the prisoners, to make their time more quality time, make handicrafts which they can sell to tourists for the amount of money they put in. I bought this Moai carved from a log. How about that? How valuable? A carving by a prisoner from the Rapa Nui Island, a very valuable artifact that I treasure. You don't get to see it every day. One of the biggest problems facing the island is its garbage and not only the garbage generated by them, but the garbage that comes from everywhere. I think it goes without saying, but look at the way this territory is littered everywhere. This is where plastic and industrial waste from many, many parts of the world gets stuck. A very obvious sign of a microplastic invasion that is happening is when you go to the beaches and notice that all the sand is indeed full of microplastic pieces. The current state of the problem has accumulated over some decades. Yes, it is more than evident. This landfill has a large surface area. Something that has caught my attention is that I have seen how local people come to leave their own garbage here. It is a gesture that the workers I have talked to appreciate for now. The solution they are applying is basically to separate all the garbage, sort it well, wait for it to dry, that it is in a certain way clean, and then they have to fumigate everything. It has to be fumigated before getting on any plane or ship. Another recent measure is that the garbage is being contacted in super heavy but compact blocks to fit on airplanes and ships. It is estimated that about 300 tons of garbage leave the island of Rapa Nui annually. It is certainly a latent problem and I find it very interesting. How is it that in spite of having a severe garbage problem, the streets are kept relatively clean? You see suddenly a little can thrown here and there, but in general it is kept very clean. Maybe because of the people's own culture. Part of their lifestyle is to be very relaxed, very stressed. That's why all over the island you see marijuana plants. It is really very common for the locals to have their crops there, in their garden, on their land. They are smoking marijuana around here. Are you going to buy chicken at the market? The guy who is attending is smoking and in general, the society is very relaxed, very cool. Maybe there is a direct connection with this. 
The main religion on the island is Christianity, although of course it mixes a lot with local beliefs and this is more than evident when you visit a cemetery. I find it fascinating to see the tombs that mix Christian crosses with local symbols such as various sculptures and even Moais embracing the cross. Some families still follow the belief of burying their loved ones underneath the dead so that the dead can reflect their greatness in the cemeteries. We can also see how freedom of land is exercised because unlike in many territories around the world here dying is free. As ironic and silly as this may sound, think about it, in your countries you have to pay a rent, a tax to have a grave. Here it is completely free land although this is already starting to cause some inconveniences because for example most of the local families want to be buried in this cemetery and the space is slowly running out. The Catholic masses here are very peculiar to me because they are partially in Rapa Nui and all the songs that are sung are also entirely in the local language. There are figures that caught my attention like this one of what seems to be a birdman named after important figures of Catholicism carved and with an attire that could be interpreted as very Christian. In the time of spring there is birdman competition. Within this competition the birdman is locked in a house and has been locked in gold and human loop for about six, seven months. Their mission is to look for the egg to get the take. That's their mission and it's called the human eye. And yes, because he's a cracker of local sculptures, most of the things we see here were made by him. Here the master put me to work, he told me to stop acting, you interview to work, man. Of course, Rapa Nui has its own flag. At first I thought it was a red boat on a white background, but it turns out that it is an era and I look, so to speak, a beautiful necklace that used to use the leaders and everywhere you can see the Chilean and Rapa Nui flags. In a certain place you see only one or the other. And related to this subject, if you are wondering if there is a little bit of resentment towards the Chileans by a percentage of the local population, it is on my Rapa Nui flag and it represents the first king that arrived to Rapa Nui, a face. He was called Tuma and the other side represents his sister with a rod and spike and this is called King Miro. There are three schools for the population. People can study completely free of charge until they finish high school at the age of 18 and to study university they would have to go to the mainland to stay connected. The inhabitants use satellite internet and I would not say that there is signal throughout the island. In fact, in the more secluded areas you are completely disconnected, but in the populated areas there is a pretty good signal. On this trip I stay connected thanks to a plan that I contracted when the beach arrived thanks to play. For once again sponsoring our reports, Hola Playas, this is a great service that I have told you about with which you can contract data for your phone almost anywhere in the world. See me here in Rapa Nui, a very isolated territory and I was able to hire it very easily and it all works with SIM and you manage more than competitive prices and we have a discount code for the channel. I leave you the link below in the description thanks to the class for sponsoring our videos. Let's continue exploring. We are visiting the island in an interesting season and that is that for the first time in 30 years they are going to change the mayor to if for three decades the same card has been in charge. Already many people are upset, you see many protest signs in the streets, groups of demonstrations, there are already the five candidates seeking to assume the new position. And yes, it is an important issue that is currently being talked about a lot in society. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. In the living room I left my little bag in the street. Here someone rescued it. I kept it. They were looking for me. That proves the myth that it is very safe here. And if it is said that robberies are super minimal, practically no robbery happens. You can't imagine if in general the mayor saw that in Rapa Nui the culture of tattoos is extremely rooted and you see it everywhere. I would say that maybe 70% of the population is tattooed and really scratched. This is due to the origins of the Polynesian ethnic groups in which for official meetings there is still an official tattoo artist of each village because he is the one who does it best of all. He is the most crack, the most master and people traditionally tattooed symbols related to the professions of their families. Young Luis Luisito, neighbor of Mexico. I have been tattooing for 30 years and I try to preserve the Rapa Nui and Polynesian culture through my art. 
The Catholics wanted to erase the tattoo culture because they said it was pagan, because it was of the devil. So what did they do to people who had tattoos? They removed them with a knife or burned them with acid. Then, when they couldn't, they covered them up, they put clothes on them. Look, I came here in 2011 and the first tattoo was a bit stronger, but now, 12 years later, 13 years later, I have this one to complete my arm a little bit, plus a small one I have here, which is a lizard or a booger, as they call it over there. Why do you do this? Because it reminds you of Rapa Nui. Why do you do it? I love the island and it is very nice to have something imprinted on your skin. One of the most common hobbies is to go out to do gym. That is to say, to fish. This style of rods are used very handcrafted, very efficient, and bait. Chicken is usually used. People like this coast because it is so rocky. Here the waves break hard, and it is said that sometimes the fish come to you by themselves. This guy was in there for about 10 minutes, and look how many fish he caught. How many would you say? 11 fish in 10 minutes instead of making a good dinner, it will be juicy. When we are cleaning the guts, it is called zakate, which is cleaning the guts. The tripe is called coco. A typical initiation custom is that when you are the new one in the fishing group with your first fish caught, you have to eat the liver. So here we have the freshly extracted finger. This is like the most, the freshest. Right now the fish is the freshest. So now I am offering it to you because this one that you caught a moment ago, a moment of initiation, I am going to give you a piece so we can share, which has to do with eating the liver, which is in our language. Since we just fished, I'll give you a piece for you. We are both fishermen now. Fishermen, fishermen, brothers. I think it's gonna be hard for them to come. I thought it was gonna taste strong and that it would be a challenge, but no, I can see that it is a no, it is a privilege, it is a leap, it is something very tasty. In the whole island, there is only one hospital where it is free to be treated. But it is not like they can really help you with a very serious situation, since in cases of extreme accidents that require very delicate surgeries or treatment of specific diseases, people have to go to the mainland to be treated, which is extremely complicated because they are five hours away by plane. So yes, the question of health treatment in general is an issue here. Because there you have a little bit of Rapa Nui, possibly the most isolated island in the whole planet. Tremendous place, tremendous culture. I have been fascinated. Thank you for joining me. See you as always, you know, in a few days with a new video.